What's happening all you Minties? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for my overview of the Ghost in the Shell, the fully compiled, complete classic manga hardcover collection from Kadansha. I'm also going to be doing a comparison to previous releases of this particular title. So, join me. Okay, what we're looking at here is the Ghost in the Shell fully compiled complete hardcover collection, or GUTS hardcover, I guess, to put it shortly. All right, and this is published by Kadansha. We've had several editions of this, but for the first time, uh, all three of the main series, Ghost in the Shell 1.5 and 2.0, are collected in one book. Here's what the spine looks like Ghost in the Shell fully compiled. Shiro Masamune, and then some bullets right there in the Kadansha logo all the way in the back. Here's actually what it collects, the Ghost in the Shell, the Ghost in the Shell 1.5, that is the Human Error Processor, and Ghost in the Shell 2, Man Machine Interface. It is the near future, which we'll get to here in a little bit, and then the price down there, $54.99 on that ISBN. Now, this has been previously released before in several formats. Right before this release was the box set release, collecting all three of the books in hardcover format. We'll compare it to those here in a little bit. It's been released in this format, which most of us here in America are familiar with. This is the left to right format. So this is when they were doing mirror images, and we'll compare it to this too. And this is published by Kadansha, but really they took the Dark Horse logo off of it because this is the Dark Horse translations, the Dark Horse edits, and it is, again, left to right format. It, the Kadansha version is a little bit shorter, though, because here's the size of a Dark Horse trade paperback. This is another Masamune Shiro work, which nobody talks about. I love this series. Orion. Oh my gosh, can we get a deluxe hardcover of this? Uh, but this is just a little bit taller than the Kadansha version. Again, left to right format because that's just the way. Oh my gosh, do I have a bookmark in here? Oh my gosh, I haven't seen this in years. It's my, sorry, I, I, I get excited over these little things. I forgot. Long before I had an art book, I had this. Uh, anyway, where the hell was I? Oh yes, so Dark Horse had previously published Ghost in the Shell in 1995, coming out in single issue format. Uh, there were eight of them. And then we got a big fat trade like these right here. That's Black Magic. Another one. And of course, the masterpiece that is Appleseed. Oh my gosh, do I love this series. And then we knew we were going to get Ghost in the Shell. But Ghost in the Shell became popularized because of a movie that we were going to get. In America, we ended up getting that movie in 1996. Manga Video premiered it here. Uh, they had a small theatrical run, but then we got it on VHS. And nothing was ever the same after that. So we'll go back to look at this and then we'll talk a little bit more about the history of Ghost in the Shell and the difference between the manga and the anime. But first, I wanted to kind of give you an idea of how big this is. This is the size of one of those standard size hardcovers uh, from Marvel and DC Comics. It's a trim size, the paper that is, of a trade paperback, which is the trim size of a single issue. To kind of give you a better idea, here it is compared to one of those said standard size hardcover a marvel masterwork but it's at this angle that you can tell that this is standard size it's not oversized like an omnibus so a better comparison would be this deluxe edition from dark horse berserk big difference though is that berserk deluxe editions have a round spine whereas this deluxe edition has a flat spine it just matters when the book is laying over now we saw it compared to the size of a standard american hardcover and that berserk deluxe but what about the previously kadansha release of all three stories in box set format it looks a little bit taller well that's because they are in this slip case this box but when we take the books out of the box they are the same height and length as that all in one fully compiled right there of course these were also released individually they all have a different price tag on them so here they are together. Now this may seem like, wait a minute, this is obviously thicker than that. That is true, and that's mainly due to the page count. This book right here, this newly fully compiled release, has 832 pages. 
whereas the box set has 864, so about 32 more pages, and they're using different paper stock, which we'll get to here in a little bit. You know, pulling these out really makes me want to get off my butt and do my top 10 most wanted manga in deluxe hardcover edition. Mental note. No, not a mental note. An actual video note on Kenny Omar. Get on that. All right, we're going to go ahead and crack this open and mainly focus on Ghost in the Shell, the main, the main eight issues, or I guess the main original series, and then give you a little bit of a synopsis as to what 1.5 and 2.0 are showcasing the artwork and then we'll do a comparison to the previous releases so just in case you've never heard of this or you've never watched the anime little bit of sp uh, minor spoilers just minor spoilers all right so before cracking this open i did want to state that this much like the previous release of it of just ghost in the shell not 1.5 or 2.0 is in the traditional japanese right to left format and every other previous release, including the Dark Horse and the soft covers from Kodansha, were the left to right and mirrored. And the translations, of course, were different. And we'll get to the comparison here in a little bit. But first, let's go ahead and crack this open. So we have some black end paper here. And here is your table of contents. Ghost in the Shell, 1.5 and 2.0, the pages they're starting in. And where you can find each of the stories. This is so crazy to think about. Uh, the ghost in the shell. In the near future, the world is highly informative, intensive, with vast corporate networks covering the planet. Electrons and light pulsing through it. But the nation, state, and ethnic groups still survive. And on the other edge of Asia, in a strange corporate conglomerate state called Japan. This is nuts. Okay, so a little bit of backstory. This was coming out in 1989 to 1990 in Japan. Japan. In America, we didn't get the manga until 1995. But even then, this stuff was way ahead of its time. We're, we're looking at the AI neuro activity in this map. And it's interesting because when we get to Ghost in the Shell... Two, we see the map has changed a little bit. Now, of course, that's a few years later. But this is 1989 when Masamune Shiro was writing this particular story. So you may have heard about Ghost in the Shell through the anime, whether it's the movies or the standalone complex. But this is where all the stories originated from. And you might have heard that this is a cyberpunk manga or anime. Yes, but it wasn't the first. Even before this came out to America, we had a bunch of anime manga that we had seen here. And we didn't get a lot of it back in the late 80s, in the 90s. But we had things like Cyber City, Oedo 808, Battle Angel Alita. Uh, we had things like Gal Force and Bubblegum Crisis or Dirty Pair, just to name a few of the titles that we got here. And we also had Akira. So it wasn't that that interested us. We had a little bit of a preview in the pages of Wizard Magazine. We had of an ash can, if you will, a little bit of a preview. It's a little book this big with just about eight pages. And it was all in color. And all of us that had been following Masamune Shiro since the days of Eclipse Comics were so excited to get this because we had heard it was big. It was huge. It was getting a movie in Japan. Now, the movie and the manga are a lot different. So... Let me first tell you a little bit about the plot. So the plot is all about, like they said, in in the near future. And as a matter of fact, when you get to this page, you get to find out the year. We're looking at 2029, six years away from Ghost of the Shell, which makes my brain just explode. But I guess that was 30 years when this was written uh, by Masamun. Oh, no, four, I guess 40. No, no way. Was that 40 years? Don't say that. Yes, math is hard. 40 years, I guess, from 1989 to 2029. But this is all about this particular group of cops and milita ex-military people that are known as Section 9. And they all live in this cyber criminal city, in this world rather. And they all try to keep people from committing crimes. And that's exactly what this is. So you have their chief right here, Daisuke uh, Aramaki. And you also have probably the most famous character that even if you've never read 
this manga or have watched the anime, you recognize Motoko Kusanagi. And that is Major Motoko Kusanagi. There's uh, Bato right there. And a couple of other members like Togusa, who's kind of like your point of view character. He's the family man. He's the one with the less android parts to his body. So he's the one that you kind of relate to. And like I said, they're stopping criminals from doing tech type of criminal activity, including hijacking people's bodies. Because we live in this future, or this is all set in this future, where the human body is kind of become insignificant. You can back up your brain to a data drive or a disk drive and pop it into an Android body, or you can replace body parts with Android body parts. And whenever you put your brain in a USB slot or a key fob and put it inside of an Android body, you become a ghost and that body, that Android robotic body becomes the shell. Hence the name, Ghost in the Shell. Now, the manga is very episodic. It's nothing like the anime until you get to about the last third of the book. And in there is where you're going to see what inspired the anime with the story of the puppeteer. As I think he's known as the puppet master in the anime. But in here, he's known as the puppeteer. Somebody that's hijacking people's bodies. But each one of these chapters is episodic. They're dealing with different types of characters, hijacking bodies, or doing illegal activities. Something from very simple like stealing people's money to hijacking people's bodies and then eventually their brains. And then you begin to ask questions. Well, what exactly is a human if you're just backing your brain up into a data disk or a, or a USB key? And that's exactly some of the questions get, that get asked here. And it, they're wonderful. And I love this story. Didn't make it to my top 20 manga of all time, but... It's still one of my favorites. Now, of course, I have to point out the fact that this story, the third, um, I think it's the third color. So the color pages are all intact. They're all in here. But this version, much like the previous hardcover version from Kadansha, does not have the two-page uh, sex scene, if you will. Because it shows Major Kusanagi actually putting her brain and connecting with other people's brains and having cyber sex. And it gets into some naughty bits. And that version in America can only be found in the second printing of the trade paperback of Ghost in the Shell from Dark Horse Comics. Even the first printing didn't have it. And Masamu Nishiro was okay with it. He actually said, okay, well, I'm okay with the changes. Because it kind of prevented his work from being printed in some countries. Or even places in Japan that didn't want to reprint his stuff because of those couple of pages. It went from that mature to 18 plus type of reading that he didn't want or need and he wanted more exposure for his work. Now, like I said, if you want the naughty bits, you can find the original manga as it was released in Japan or you can find the second printing of that trade paperback. I'm not leaving a link. I just want people to know because I know what people are. But that was a decision made by Dark Horse Editorial and then later on Masamu Nishiro. And every edition since then has been taking that out. And it, it was a really interesting scene because it explains how that works. That only women could be with women because they have the ten sensation of what it feels like. Because if a man were to go and have cyber sex with another woman, he doesn't have those body parts to enjoy that sensation. It got really deep. And something you're going to notice are these little mini footnotes all over the place. And to a lot of people, that kind of takes them out of this particular story. Because unlike footnotes, and I don't even want to call them footnotes, I want to just call them notes, they are very necessary to keep the story moving forward. A lot of them, you know, are just like, hey, I read this book in the 80s, it hasn't been translated into English, good luck finding it, but it was the source for this uh, particular scene. Or it kind of tells you the feelings of some of the characters or why a character decided to do something. But then you get some background stuff of like, oh yes, the blood in this scene is because of so and so and so and so. And he cites a lot of the works that inspire this. And you get to see the inside workings of some of the machinery. And oh my gosh, to talk about this book and not mention the beautiful artwork and machinery and details. My gosh. It is mind-blowing. So all the pages, besides those two pages that I mentioned earlier, are intact. Uh, the sound effects are now, as a matter of fact, it's the pages in between here. They just had to edit it out with the footnote. Um, the sound effects are translated within the panels or right out of the panel. So right here, you can see it's translated up there. 
Uh, you can see the sound effect translated up here, which in the past with the notes and the sound effects, you would have to go to the back for the notes. And the sound effects were actually translated into the English. But now the sound effects are left intact and the translations are right outside of the panel boxes or sometimes in the panel boxes. And the other thing to keep in mind is maybe it's just my age, but holy crap, the notes are kind of hard to read at first. Uh, this explains some of the movies that he saw, for example. So you may need a camera to just zoom in on those notes, just like that. But I just want to give you a heads up that the notes are now where they originally were supposed to be. And to a lot of people, it may kind of take you out of the story. Like, why am I reading this guy's thoughts? To me, it kind of makes it a very charming manga experience. I've never read anything like this in my life uh, where the writer just, it, it's almost like he's talking directly to you and he doesn't give a crap if he takes you out of the story. He wants to add more elements to his story and he thinks the best way to do it is doing it through notes. He wants you to know how these tanks and weapons work. He wants you to know what blood flows through the body of these androids. Or he wants you to go and check out a book that he read in the 1980s. He doesn't care. And I think that's a unique experience. And to some people, it might feel like, well, that's kind of incoherent. The story doesn't make any sense. And I can see that too. Now, that's the first story. And we'll do a comparison to the other uh, previously released formats. And the other thing I forgot to mention is if you're coming to this manga from the world of the anime, whether it's the TV series or the movies or even the video games, is that this is a different Kusanagi than you're seeing in those portrayals. She's not as stoic. She's a little more quirky. She's funny. Uh, she makes cute little faces that you know, were very tropey back in the 80s and 90s of anime ladies. But keep that in mind. So if you're looking for like a more serious tone to the character, you're not gonna find it through the manga. And I think that always kind of confuses people when they read this particular series for the first time. But my gosh, there's some beautiful artwork. And then we get to the afterword. And I love the fact that in the afterword, they also collected it in Japanese. So you have the translation here, and everything collected in the original language. I love that. And then we get to 1.5. So this is Human Error Processor. And here is, obviously don't read this until you read uh, Ghost in the Shell, but this is more about the other characters that he wanted to tell stories about. Some of the Section 9 characters, but in here you're going to see characters like Togusa, Bato, uh, Paz, Borma, Oh, what was it? Akuma? No, Akuma is the character in Street Fighter in the American version. Azuma. Azuma, that's the character's name. And they're continuing their work as covert operatives. And you can see a little bit behind the scenes and their family life. So a little bit more. And then we get Ghost in the Shell 2. Now, okay. So Ghost in the Shell was 1989 to 1990. Ghost in the Shell 1.5, Human Error Processor, that came out in 1991. But he didn't finish it until 1996. By then, he had blown up and working on other things. Ghost in the Shell 2 came out in 1997. Now, that only took about a year to finish. So here he starts off with an apology and correction. This one here takes place in 2035, whereas the Ghost in the Shell 1.5 took place about a year after Ghost in the Shell. So about 2030. This one here taking place about six years. And you do get to see Major Kusanagi here. However, she's a little bit different. And there are reasons for that, which you can read the first book to find out. There's a lot of color pages in this book right here. It's not all in color. There are, of course, some black and white, but it's a lot of colors compared to the original tube or even the original one. Uh, so this focuses back again on the major and some of the changes that has gone in in her life. And she's currently in this particular story. She's working as, secure, as a security expert for an industrial uh, business. So let's look at the very back for no extras, absolutely no extras. All the notes, all the sound effects translated within each page. So that's what's lacking. So look at the binding. So it is sewn binding. And like I mentioned earlier, there's that flat spine, but that's just the way the book lays over. And 
not a lot of spread pages, of course. And the one thing I forgot to note is that towards the end of each of the books is where you're going to find some of the notes and some of the extras. Not a lot. Not as much as, of course, the box set. Those have a lot of the sketches and things like that. You're not going to find as many here. You're just going to find a few of the extras, like these notes back here. Let's do a quick comparison to previously released printings. This is the other Kodansha printing in hardcover format and for the first time available in the traditional right to left like the Japanese. Of course, we're not going to have those table of contents. But immediately and something I notice is the paper quality on this version. And the fully compiled version has this thinner, almost newsprint type of paper that they're using. Whereas this is using a thick matte paper. And going from this to this, I immediately noticed that. So there is some bleed through happening from time to time. But the colors are a, just absorbed a lot better over here. The scans that Kadansha uses though on both versions just seem a little bit rough. Like the colors are just a little more vibrant over here, but they're still a little bit muddied. Almost to the point where I don't know if they were actually scanning pages or if they just took photo of the pages. I don't know what happens. And it's you can mainly tell through the color pages. Let me show you, for example, right here, you just get lost. First of all, that is a, I love this scene. It's beautiful. Like the camo actually works. I don't really see that in uh, comics that often, but it just seems like a little bit of a mess. It doesn't seem as detailed as the previous version. So let's go ahead and compare it to the previous version. Again, this is the Dark Horse scans with different translations, including the sound effects within the pages. Um, but the art is a lot more clear. You can see a lot more of the lines and details with this version right here. And I don't know why. So let's go back to these pages right here. This looks like a zoom in of this, which is really interesting. Now, these right here, good examples of this particular version, this new fully compiled version being better because the colors are actually darker. And you can tell, well, this looks a little bit faded out, even though this is a newer copy or the latest copy that I had. Colors are a little darker over here, but this is what it looks like compared to this. So maybe it just helps out during some particular scenes. And here we go. This is what I wanted to show right here. And I know it's a grotesque scene, but maybe the lighter colors, and this is the way that I remember them from the Dark Horse version, and maybe they wanted to darken them out, uh, add a little more contrast in there. I'm not sure what happened, but here I think like this stands out a lot more than this version right here. And I don't know why that is, and it just seems like there's just so much going on here. You get a little lost. You can see a little more splattered to the back. Again, it could be the paper quality. But again, the scans, I think, is really what's going on here. Like, to me, her body stands out a little bit more here. And this is, of course, an iconic scene later on in the movie than it does right here. Colors are a little bit faded out. And this is the newer colors. And some people may prefer this. And, and I think it's just your own taste. But I did want to point out the differences in the scans. It's not just the mirror, the flipping of the, uh, the panels, but the actual colors look like they're different. And I think they are better in this hardcover version. We're going to look at the 1.5 and 2.0 here in a little bit. But if you prefer the darker tones, uh, maybe try to find this right here or get the box set because... Uh, yeah, the, the paper that they're... I'm surprised they're using this type of paper for a deluxe edition. Let's uh, look at these pages. Yeah, and maybe it's just nostalgia. That this is the way that I remember the pages. And this is like, huh, that looks a little too dark. So maybe they turned up a couple of options in whenever they were doing the After Effects. Yeah, this is the way I remember. Like, her face is blue, and over here, her face actually has a flesh tone to it. And, I don't know. just seems like the, the way that I remembered it is way different than what we have in the new version. 
Or hell, maybe if you're just like me, you're going to keep both versions of it, so... Because you just enjoy the story so much. Then, of course, we get to the black and white. Now, the black and white doesn't... you Really, with uh, with, that, with the exception of the bleed-through that you get, and that's a very common thing in manga, you see some bleed-through from the opposite page, and but it's mainly due to the paper stock that they're using here. wonder why they decided to go with this paper and not some thick matte paper like they did in Berserk. So we'll just do a couple more pages of comparison. Like I said, mainly it's the color pages I wanted to compare um, with the different paper stock they're using uh, from the individual release to the fully compiled release. So it looks like the colors and the inks are absorbed more with the paper they're using here. And I wish they had used this paper. I understand, you know, paper has gone up and even the big two publishers save money on paper. So it's not a very uncommon decision to make when it comes to publishing. And maybe that's why they decided to use this kind, but yeah, I like the more vibrant colors in here but again compared to the way that i remember it it's interesting to be turning the pages this way and then with this one over here i don't think my old brain can keep up but this is ghost in the shell one let me compare 1.5 now 1.5 i have a very interesting release when they decided to do a tonkoban size releases they did the same thing with ghost in the shell bringing it down a little bit but let's compare this now for this in this version they used a thick glossy paper and again this is the fully compiled version but this is the way that it looks compared to this version right here which it looks like they're using the same scans but holy crap maybe glossy paper for this type of colors are the way they should have gone of course that would have upped the price of the book but Look how well that looks, even though it's a smaller frame than that compared to that. This really absorbs those colors and inks. My gosh, right there compared to this. Wish I had kept my Ghost in the Shell. Um, here, actually, let's compare this. Even the blacks look great here compared to the paper stock over here. Let's, uh, so you can tell the more details over here than in the bigger frame and not every manga looks better like this you know it really depends on the type of inking that they're doing not every black and white book is going to look better in glossy paper and we've known that like to me sin city looks great in those deluxe individual editions compared to the big damn sin city which they use a different paper stock now that we've compared it to this Let's compare it to the paper stock of the individual release here from Kadansha. So again, right to left format, and it's using thick matte paper. And the colors look like they're absorbed a little bit better over here, but I still prefer, maybe just me, this glossy paper right here in the small Tonkoban size book. Usually a little bit darker, this is lighter over here, but this to me is just perfect. The ripples right there, my gosh, yeah. Ghost in the Shell 2, we've gone back to the left to right format and Tonkoban size, but also printed in this thick glossy paper. And compared to this, yeah, that. This looks a little blurry compared to this. This looks a lot more defined. And here's what we looked at earlier. Now let's look, because this one has a lot of color. Maybe it is all acquired taste maybe it's all nostalgia but my gosh i think the colors here look absolutely stunning this this doesn't look bad but i think i prefer the colors in here and just comparing again some pages yeah this is late 90s you can definitely tell when they were starting to use heavy cg in comics my gosh Footnotes translated here, and I appreciate the bigger footnote font instead of this. Oh my gosh, here, let's compare just a couple more pages before we get to the nudity parts, and then YouTube decides to demonetize me. But again, the translation of the sound effects are done within the panels. Here, you sometimes have to go outside of the panel to tell, but this is what it looks like. Holy crap, the action. Wow. This looks beautiful. 
Wow. Yeah, you know, if you've never owned it like this, and this is absolutely stunning and breathtaking. But I did want to compare it to this. Now, a quick comparison to the individual release here. Let's just go to this page right here. And colors are just a little bit darker over here than in the individual release. But I really like the blues in here. And here's the other page. Let's, uh, there's a lot of color, so let's just skip some pages. And let's get to some of the black and white. Which, again, the amount of details in his background, yet you're still able to tell what's going on without getting lost. Definitely a master of what he's doing. And... Colors are a little, or the black and white is a little darker over here. So you, you can see a little more defined lines than over here. Not that this isn't bad or terrible. It's just a little more over here. And here's another example where the inks are darker over here. And what the black and whites look like on that Tonka bond up there. But that's it. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to compare the different editions and give you an overview and a little bit of synopsis as to what Ghost in the Shell is. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this hardcover, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answered within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build, and of course, comparison to previous printings of this book. Let me know in the comments down below if you've never read it, if you're just a fan of the anime and I've always wondered about the manga, or if this is one of your top 5, top 10, top 20 favorite manga or stories of all time. If you've read this, what format do you own it in? Do you still have the single issues? Wish I had kept mine. I think my brother might still have them. But anyway. I would love to know all those answers, and if you have any questions, leave your questions down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.